digital tokens are designed so their prices oscillate around each other, limiting losses. And with me is the creator of seasonal tokens, Ruan, to explain this and then also something that I'd really never heard of, Ruan, the diamond water paradox. And it's kind of relevant to digital currency. So let's start with this. So people often think utility of a token is the most important thing, but the more useful a crypto is, the more it should cost. But you say that's actually a misconception. So explain your thinking about that. Okay, so the explanation is from the diamond water paradox. This is a paradox that goes all the way back to Plato, but the best explanation of it was given by Adam Smith in The Wealth of Nations in 1776. And the way he described it was, he said that there are two types of value, that there's value for use and there's value for exchange. And what he found was that the things that had the highest value for use tended to have the lowest value for exchange and the things with the highest value for exchange have the lowest value for use. And the example that he gave was diamonds and water. So water is obviously the most useful thing, but it's, it has the lowest value for exchange. You can't really buy anything with water because it doesn't have a high market price. But on the other hand, diamonds have very little uses, especially in his day. And now there are uses, but still diamonds are not as useful as water and not even approximately as useful, but they're much, much more expensive. And uh, his explanation for why you have this disparity is he said that the true price of something is the cost of obtaining it. And diamonds are basically much more difficult to obtain than water. So it's not the use that gives things its value. Rather, the scarcity, the difficulty of obtaining it tells you how much you're going to have to pay in order to get it. And it's not just diamonds and water. It's true of a whole lot of asset classes. It's true. If you look at gold and oil, for example, gold is more expensive than oil, even though oil is way more useful than gold. And uh, in cryptocurrencies, it's true as well. So Bitcoin is more expensive than Ethereum, but Ethereum is much more useful because it can be used for smart contracts to pay for gas for so many things, whereas Bitcoin can only be used for payments. And the explanation, again, is that it's scarcity. Bitcoins are a lot more scarce than Ether is. So it's not utility, it's uh, scarcity that really determines the price. Yeah. Well, it's fascinating economics behind that. And I, I do remember a few years ago, people were saying oh, Ethereum really is going to be the key cryptocurrency that has yet to happen, at least in terms of price. So it makes sense what you're saying. Yeah, people thought that Ethereum would overtake Bitcoin because it was so much more useful, but that yeah. hasn't happened. And that kind of demonstrates that the scarcity of Bitcoin is supporting its value. Yeah, interesting. So, and time controls the market price as well. I mean, that's one of the factors, is particularly in options trading, is time. The more time it takes, to mine also the more value there is. So explain that a little bit more, kind of expand on that concept. Okay, so yeah, we actually had some interesting results on that over the course of 2022 with seasonal tokens. So we had four different tokens and they're produced at different rates and you can see how the market prices evolved in 2022. And what we found was that amount of time it takes to produce a token by mining is essentially what controls the price. So a token that takes twice as long to mine is going to have a price that's twice as large, a market price. And this has tended to be the case throughout all of 2022. Initially, we didn't know exactly what were going to be the, the major factors determining the price. We thought that uh, the rate of production would be one component and the cost of producing them would be another component and the total number of tokens in existence would be third component. And we thought we would have to figure out how much each of these components contributed to the market price. But what we found over the course of 2022 is that essentially the rate of production dominates the price. The other factors didn't really have any detectable effect on the price. It was really just how long it took to produce a token. And that kind of fits into the idea that scarcity is what is determining the price. Basically, it's how quickly these things can get onto the market. That tells you how fast people can buy them. And that basically things that arrive on the market faster get their price pushed down faster. So essentially, that seems to fit in very well with the diamond water paradox. Very interesting. And could this be behind why a lot of the crypto projects fail? Uh, absolutely. If you ask any VC or anybody who's interested in evaluating new tokens and seeing whether they want to invest in them, the first thing they'll always ask is what's the utility? And they're kind of hoping that uh, basically if it has a utility, that will mean that it will have a high market price, but uh, it doesn't actually work that way in practice. You can see when NFTs came out, they seemed to be, okay, this is finally a use. We can, whatever, pass these digital images. It's possible to understand why there would be demand, but that hasn't, it did initially when there was a lot of hype, it produced uh, high market prices, then there wasn't anything to sustain it. So what you really have is all throughout the entire industry, you have billions and billions of dollars every year that are being invested based on utility with the hope that buying something that's more useful will make the price rise. And uh, well, not, well, you buying it will make the price rise. But the hope is that its utility will produce demand and that will cause the price to rise over time. But uh, what we see, like if you look at, for example, mobile phones, if these are incredibly useful, they're almost as useful as water, but they're getting cheaper and they're <laughs> getting cheaper like water, well, going in the direction of water by becoming cheaper and more useful over time. But uh, if you were to buy a mobile phone and think this is going to be very useful in the future, you'd be right that it's going to be useful in the future, but you wouldn't be right that the price is going to rise because of that. So you have a lot of investing that's basically based on the misconception that you 
volatility is going to result in a high market price and billions of dollars are wasted every year. You're absolutely right. Because whenever, you know, I do an interview with the crypto project or I've heard others, people will always ask, well, what's the utility of this? Like, how can I use this? Can I go to buy my coffee and things like that? But that doesn't sound like it's really relevant to, and, and people will say the converse about Bitcoin. Well, what is it used for? But it sounds like those are not the determining factors in the price of something. And the price, exactly. Yeah, the price is the exchange value of something. It's not the utility value of something. Mm. So before we wrap up, Ruan, just explain seasonal tokens for people who maybe haven't um, seen one of our previous interviews. Explain how it works. Absolutely. So there are four tokens that produced by proof of work mining, and they're designed so that their prices will cycle around each other slowly over the course of years. And this means that investors can hold whichever one is going to become the most expensive later on. And once it does, they can trade it for a cheaper one. And by doing that, they get more tokens in total. So if you trade uh, three summer tokens for five spring tokens, then you have more tokens in total after the trade than before. So as long as you follow the rule of always trade tokens for more tokens of a different type, then the total number of tokens in the investment increases every time you trade. So it's possible to keep accumulating tokens over time and the oscillating prices ensure that it's always possible to have more opportunities to do that again in the future. So it gives you the opportunity to have a long-term investment where the total number of tokens increases. And this is happening at the same time as the tokens are becoming scarcer because once every nine months, the rate of production of one of the tokens is cut in half, just like what happens with Bitcoin once every four years. And this means that there's going to be increasing scarcity. So 10 years from now, it's not going to be possible to buy a million tokens on the market. Well, you can buy a million tokens, but you won't be able to buy them from miners. Miners won't be providing that number of tokens to the market. So if you want to buy a million tokens 10 years from now, you're going to have to buy them from existing investors. Okay. Whereas this year, you can buy them from miners. Okay. And then also, uh, where how can somebody find out more about seasonal tokens? And I know you have kind of a mock, like if you're still a little confused by how it works, there's a mock way to trade on your website, right? Absolutely. So they go to our website at seasonaltokens.org and if they want to try out the trading tokens for more tokens, there's a simulator there. You don't have to use real money and you can practice over the course of 10 years and see how many tokens you can accumulate by trading as the cycles go through each other. Interesting. Always interesting to talk to you, Ruhan. Thank you so much for explaining this. It kind of gives me a new look at uh, cryptocurrencies. Thanks. My pleasure.